Hi, I am Dr. D. Madhu, Senior Consultant Surgical Oncologist and Robotic Surgeon from Kims Hospital. We are going to discuss about cervical cancer today. Generally, cervix is the lower part of the uterus in the woman. Uh, the cancer affecting cervix is called the cervical cancer. This cancer generally presents with symptoms like bleeding per vagina, whitish discharge and uh, any bleeding episode during uh, intercourse and in some patients it presents with serous discharge. Most of the patients will present with discharge from the vagina. Other than this, it may present with back pain, pain in the pelvis and sometimes with advanced symptoms like cough and fluid in the abdomen. So these are various symptoms with which cervical cancer women presents to the physician. Risk factors for causation of cervical cancer. This all depends upon the hygiene of the uh, woman. Women with a better hygiene has got lesser incidence and female with multiple partners may have the higher incidence of cervical cancer. In cervical cancer incidence, the familial history and the genetic inheritance has got less significance. Most of the times, this is a hygiene related cancer. So most it, it occurs in a low, low profile society and in a well pro educated woman, the incidence of cervical cancer is low. So when a patient presents with bleeding per vagina or a whitish discharge, when a clinician is suspicious of cervical cancer, the first step what the clinician will do is put a scope into the vagina, colposcope and examine the lesion, how it is and what are its boundaries and uh, what is its extent. These things are assessed. So, in either through colposcope or manual, we can take a small bit of the growth and send it for histopathology. This is called colposcopic guided biopsy. And based on the biopsy result, we are going to uh, diagnose cervical cancer and confirm its diagnosis. When its diagnosis is established, uh, the next step is evaluation, how to evaluate uh, cervical cancer. In these patients, we generally clinician has to examine completely uh, the per vaginal examination and per rectal examination. Basically, to, extend, to know the extent of the lesion, whether it is confined to the cervix or it has gone beyond the level of cervix to involve the surrounding structures. Based on this, we are going to decide the treatment of the tumor. So now the diagnosis is established and disease extent is known. We will get an imaging, uh, or any, any imaging like MRI or a CT scan to know the extent of the lesion on a uh, subjective pattern or objective pattern. When the disease is confined to the cervix only and that to the lesion is early, the role of surgeon comes. So for a early cervical cancer, and the surgical role will be to do a radical hysterectomy. The surgery we do for early cervical cancer is called radical hysterectomy. So it can be done open laparoscopic or robotic multiple approaches and uh, all are equal. Only thing is the recovery is quicker and uh, resuming work in a patient will be quicker uh, if they get it done with laparoscopy or robotics. And recently there has been a lot of controversy whether to do minimal invasive surgery in cervical cancer or not. And uh, the surgeon with good experience and good results can explain the patient 
and uh, uh, give them the benefits of minimal invasive surgery in cervical cancer also. This is the surgical option. The surgical option is for early cervical cancer, that is a stage 1 disease. And late stage 1 and stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 all becomes locally advanced cervical cancer. For this locally advanced cervical cancer, initial uh, non-surgical treatment, that is giving radical radiation along with chemotherapy, that is called chemo radiation. So once this chemo radiation is given, some patients respond completely, some patients will have partial response. Complete response patients can be kept under follow-up. A patient with a partial response needs to undergo further treatment, that is surgery. Again, the surgery involves radical hysterectomy only. So the, among the surgical approaches, three approaches as I described, open, laparoscopy and robotics, all the three are uh, equal in oncological outcome. The recovery rate is faster in laparoscopy and robotics. And robotics has got the edge in increasing the lymph nodal yield in radical hysterectomy procedure. When it comes to discussion of the precautions, how to prevent cervical cancer, there are certain concepts need to be uh, learned and known to the society. Sometimes it's a preventable cancer. Uh, mother with her children who are likely to get the cervical cancer uh, can be given certain vaccines against the cervical cancer. These vaccines have to be given during the fertile period, uh, that is in between the ages of 9 and 21, so that uh, the vaccine will have the effect of preventing the cervical cancer only if it is given in that particular age group. And it is only 70 to 80 percent protective. Apart from this, uh, they have to develop good hygiene, uh, which will prevent from certain infections. And uh, this good hygiene also prevents cervical cancer incidence. So certain factors like these vaccines and good hygiene are helpful in preventing cervical cancer at least to some extent.